Hello, my name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com and I'm here today to answer the question, what is gesso? Now, gesso seems to be a big, mysterious product sometimes and it's really not that big of a uh, big mystery, actually. It's just an art supply. So I have some information for you about gesso and I have a couple of examples to show you of things that I've done with gesso. Nothing real big, but just some fun things to give you some ideas. So gesso is a substance that prepares a surface and it is made from paint, pigment, chalk, and a binder. And so they, they combine those things together and voila, they get gesso. It was traditionally used to prime a surface to accept oil paint so that it would adhere properly to the surface, usually canvases. It's a primer, a surface preparation, and it's kind of a sealer. You can use it as a sealer for some in some applications. Now, it also provides tooth, which means it takes a surface that might be kind of slick and it and it gives it a surface, a toothy surface, a little texture for other things to stick to it. So that's how it primes the surface. It gives it something to other things to adhere to. It also, if you use it on paper, like sometimes we use it in an art journal. If you're using drawing paper or something that's not a very, uh, not a paper that's, that is, oh, let's say not supposed to accept lots of different media, like drawing paper is for drawing, it's for pencils. Let's say you want to use that as an art journal. Well, maybe you need to add some gesso to that paper because it will thicken the paper a little bit. It kind of strengthens the paper up. Or another place you could use it is if you're using an old book, say an old ledger for an art journal. And I have some around here. I'm looking at the moment. I can't put my, can't put my finger on one right now. I do have an old ledger here that I was going to show you, but I forgot to get it out. So I'll show that to you another time. But you can use gesso to gesso those pages and that will help those pages, you know, kind of keep them a little stronger for a little bit longer if you use that for an art journal. Let's see, what else? Oh, you can also use gesso to texture the surface of your paper or your wood or your canvas. So if you put gesso, if you put a thick enough layer on the surface, you can scratch into it, you can um, stamp into it, you can just do all different kinds of things. You can drag combs through it, you can do things to add texture to the surface in the gesso. And you can really get a texture out of the, the extra heavy or the heavy gesso. That really, that's, it's, not as thick as like molding paste or modeling paste, but it's thicker than paint. So you can get some interesting effects, texture effects in the gesso that way. Now gesso comes in two different grades. You have the artist quality and you have the student quality. So I'm gonna show you examples of those two things here. So let's take a look at these. First of all, we'll look at a student grade gesso. So this is a typical student grade gesso that you can get a hold of. This is by the company Daler Rowney. It's an acrylic gesso. And this is, it's a very reasonably priced gesso. And it is, it's a, I like it a lot. It's very smooth. This is a white gesso. Gesso comes in white. It's available in clear and it's available in colors sometimes. Although I'm not sure that I see it in colors as much as I used to. So. Uh, and it's also in black. So I primarily use the white, the black, and the clear. So this is white, this is student grade. It, student grade means that it has more fillers in it. The artist quality doesn't have all the fillers. It's also reflective in that price because it's much more expensive for the artist grade gesso. So this is an example of this is an artist, I believe this is considered an artist grade. It says artist quality primer. This is the Dina Wakely Media line. And this is a nice gesso. So this is white. You'll notice I've taken a Sharpie and I've circled white in a, a big circle because this is an example of clear gesso. And this is also from Dina Wakely. You can see the label looks the same. You can see that this, the color of the product in the bottle looks the same. 
So I've written clear, or I've circled the word clear, because this is the clear gesso, and I've also written it on the lid. So I really recommend that you do that if you have jars that are a similar size and look the same just visually from the outside. The Golden Company has an artist grade gesso, and it's jar is the same as the gel medium and it's the same as the fiber paste and it's the same as the modeling paste and so you really need to make sure that you label those bottles so you don't grab one for example grabbing the white gesso when i really intended to get the clear gesso and i'm thinking i'm going to put a coat of clear gesso on something so i can see what's underneath it but i instead slap white gesso on it and obliterate the background that is really bad if you do that so label your bottles that's a big fat hint right there so when would you use clear gesso some ideas for clear gesso is when you want to maintain the color of whatever's underneath you want let's say well let's go back to that old ledger type idea where i want to maintain and see that the writing the old writing underneath you can put clear gesso on that it will strengthen the paper but um, and it will give you some tooth to work on, but it will also let you see what's underneath it. So that's one way that you can use the clear gesso. Uh, let's see what else. Um, clear gesso, this one in particular, this is really smooth. This is a super smooth clear gesso. I have another one right here that's from the Liquitex company. And this Liquitex clear gesso, now this one, if you put this on, feels like sand in it. It is super, super gritty. This is very, very smooth, very, very gritty. There are two different applications. I really like this for some things. I love this for most things. So just because you buy one gesso doesn't mean that there are, just because you buy a clear gesso, for example, it doesn't mean that they're all the same. One of the things that's nice about this one is that when this goes over something, over your surface, let's say over acrylic paint, for example, which tends to have kind of a plastic feel to it because it's, you know, that's kind of what acrylic paint is. Sometimes you can't get your pens to write over it, like in an art journal, for example. You can take the clear gesso, this one in particular, because it's not gritty, you can put that over the surface. That takes away the shine, the gloss of the acrylic paint. And then once it's fully dry, then you can come back over it with your ballpoint pens, like the food ball or food a ball. I don't know how you pronounce it, but anyway, one of those pens will usually work right over the top of it. And some of your other ballpoint type pens will work. I would not write over the top of this with a felt tip pen because usually they don't like to go over much of anything uh, without clogging up and killing the pen. So a ballpoint type pen is going to work be your best bet and over clear gesso like this you have a better shot at being able to do that rather than trying to write directly over acrylic paint because directly over acrylic paint the ballpoint pen is usually just going to skip and say i don't want to do this yeah it's cut they do they do talk you know they do talk um also one other thing you can do with the clear gesso is if you have water soluble products, say um, Stabilo pen, Stabilo pencils, or Neocolor 2, or water soluble oil pastels, that those kinds of things, if you carefully put a coat of clear gesso, and by carefully I mean you might want to spread it with a palette knife gently over the surface. You don't want to take a brush and try to put clear gesso and slap that clear gesso over top of water soluble media because if you do you're going to start moving it. But if you apply an even coat pretty quickly with let's say a palette knife, put a nice thin coat, it can act as a sealer over the top of things that might react with water or that do react with water. And this could seal it in for you as long as you've got it fully covered then you can work on top of that without destroying and moving that layer. Another thing you can do, and let me show you before I tell you that, I'm going to show you an example of colored gesso. This gesso, the color that's in here that you see through the bottle, this is actually the color of the gesso. So this is gray gesso. Having said that, you can take your white gesso and you can tint it if you need to with your acrylic paints. So if you can't get a colored gesso, just take your white gesso and tint it with your acrylic paint. 
And this is an example of black gesso. This just happens to be, these happen to be the brands that I have on hand, but there are many brands, many different brands of all these products that I'm showing you. And this is a great, this black gesso is just super phenomenal. Um, let's see if I can get a hold of a journal here. I think this is the journal. Nope. Looking for a journal here that I used. Maybe this one. Going to show you something if I can find it. Nope, it's not in that one. All right, I'm going to try one more. If it's not in here, we're going to give up, right? I don't see what I was looking for. I was looking for one of my journals. It must be, uh, I must have put it someplace else. Sometimes I do what I call, um, I do a lot of writing, as you could tell, with all those journals that I was looking in. Let's, I'll give you an example, even though I have, I don't uh, have it in here. So let's say, for example, that I've written all over this page and I've written a bunch of stuff that I don't want anybody to read, but I needed to write it and get it out of me. And so I'll write it and not judge or edit what I'm writing because I just get it out on the page. And if I never want anybody to read it, including myself, then I take black gesso and I just paint it all over the words. And then sometimes I do, I'll draw a mandala on top of it, or I'll draw, just do some doodling on top of it, or I'll do some collage on top of it. So that is a great, great way for using black gesso because it totally obscures all the writing. So that's one of my favorite things to do with black gesso. If you put gesso on a canvas like this, so this has white gesso on it, and then I've got a background going on, the gesso will allow your paint to go further. So that is a nice thing because it won't allow your paint to just suck into and soak down into that canvas. So a couple of different examples of that going on right here. So both of the, this one has gesso under, the background and then I've used gesso on the top of it also to blend the colors together. So that works really well um, to extend your paint and help it to go further. And then another thing that I like to do with the gesso, this is a little accordion book that I made and this is a bunch of single sheets of paper that are put together to make this book. And you can see the difference in the yellow. This is because I took a palette knife and I scraped some gesso on here and let it dry. It is important to let gesso cure. Um, it's best if you're going to put gesso on a canvas or something, it's best if you put that on there and let it cure for 24 hours before you go over it with something else. And because it doesn't need to just be dry, it needs to be cured to really get the most out of that gesso. On the case of paper, this is watercolor paper, I just took a palette knife and I scraped it haphazardly over these pages. Then I went back over it with paint and you can see the places where the paint is darker. I used a baby wipe and I put the paint on here and you can see the places where the paint is darker and places where you can barely see it. That's because of the way that the gesso takes the paint and the raw paper takes the paint. It takes it two completely different ways. So it will change the intensity of that paint that goes down. So you can get some really interesting effects and it will look like I've used two different colors on this paper when I haven't. I haven't done that at all. I've used one color of paint that I've wiped all over the surface, but because there was gesso in some places, it will have that appearance. And then this is an example of using the clear gesso. What I've done here is I've used this gritty clear gesso, part this, part of this and about half of that and about half of the matte medium mixed together and then painted on the surface. And that prepares the surface. It has, I wish you had could feel it because it has the most wonderful texture. 
and that's what I used on the surface here over oil pastels in the background. So this has an oil pastel background back here, which never, ever, ever seals it or never dries. So you have to do something to seal oil pastel to the background. So I used that and then I went back over the top with it with Inktense pencils over the top. And it just, it just makes the nicest feeling background. I have to tell you. Okay, I think that's it. Hopefully that's answered some of your questions about gesso and different ways to use gesso and kind of the different kinds of gesso and so forth. My name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. HowToGetCreative.com is a membership website. We'd love to have you come over and check us out. We have tons and tons and more all the time of creative arts videos that cover a wide variety of creative arts from sewing to paper to fabric to you name it. Carving sweet potatoes. I know. Who knew you could do that, right? To creating books, everything. You name it. We've got all kinds of creative arts things going on over there. So come on over and check us out. My name's Barb Owen. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.